Extreme Rules is five days away. And we got a lot more matches on here, and uh, a lot of them I think we've gone over, but I want to stress some of them. Uh, some of them have changed. Some of them may not even happen. And some of them just have any stipulations, so we'll just go through them quickly. First off, we'll go through the uh, kickoff match with the tag team titles. I guess this is the second pay-per-view in a row that the tag team titles have been on the kickoff. And it's the team, Penny Tamins of Cesaro and Tyson Kidd against the New Day, represented by Big E and Kofi Kingston. Which, I loved the uh, tag team match on Raw last night. I love the fact that they used the old Bobby Heenan kind of grab the person's ro uh, foot so they can't get back in the ring until the 10 count is over. Just holding him out there, making him get counted out. Brilliant. It was brilliant. I don't know why we have two heel teams facing each other, I guess. Which is very rare. Unless you're thinking of turning one of them face, I guess. But, uh, the Lucha Dragons had a, had a great match. Uh, but, you know what? I can't complain with the booking here. I can't complain with the finish. I can't complain with anything. It was great. It was fucking brilliant. And, uh... I guess Kofi and Big E are representing the New Day because Xavier Woods is not swapped out at all in this match. Uh, but what will happen in this match is Tyson Kidd and Cesaro win this match. I mean, they just won the belts a couple months ago. They won them going into WrestleMania, so you're expecting them to hold the belts for a while. But I would not be surprised if we have the New Day as the New Daddy Champions. I I won't think that I don't I, that will happen, but I won't be surprised if it does. And on the main cards, we have a million matches added onto this card, and it's fucking great. Uh, first off, the Chicago Street Fight between Dean Ambrose and uh, Luke Harper. And we're in, apparently this thing is in Chicago, so it's Chicago street, Chicago street Fight will happen in this match. And I don't care who wins. I will just say this, though. This will not be a match. This will not be a street fight. This will be a war, and this will be a match to watch for sure. Uh, and then we have the piss break of the fucking pay-per-view, which is Roman Reigns versus The Big Show in a last man standing match. I mean, this is the first time The Big Show Roman Reigns feud has made it on pay-per-view to actually be in a one-on-one -on -one singles match. They did have something at the Rumble, and they've had matches ever since then, but this match, not even a last man standing will, will make this match watchable. And I just want to stress something really clear. I don't hate Roman Reigns. I hate the way he's booked to become the next Cena of those of you, which is basically what they're doing. And to put him against Big Show so many times, it just doesn't make sense. Why would you watch this match? If anything, this is a match you go, go to the bathroom, take a big old shit, and then come back when it's over. That's what this match is in a nutshell. I don't care who wins, but I would assume that Roman Reigns would win to look strong. But then again, they made a London cab strong for Raw, SmackDown, and every other week with this feud. So, I expect the London cab to come in and win this match, personally. And then we have the fucking Kiss Me Arse match. This is another match that I am... I was... Uh, I was excited about it first because I'm like, we have not seen a kiss my ass match in forever. But at the same time, why is this match happening? Why is this match here? Um, either way, this would be a great match. Um, as long as we don't see the fucking bare ass of Sheamus, because he's a, he's as white as it is. So I doubt they will have a win just because of that. But if they were going to make a statement, they would have him win this match. And we're going to do the, the tag team title. Uh, one match that is going to be very interesting to look for is to see if this match even happens. And we talked about this last time, but uh, Daniel Bryan versus uh, Bad News Barrett for the Intercontinental title. In a normal match, it looks like, except stream rules, that might be a stipulation, I don't know. But um, we have not seen a lot of Daniel Bryan the past few weeks. I mean, the last match he had was actually last uh, SmackDown last week in a tag match with Cena against the tag champ, which was a great match. Uh, but... Uh, uh, this this match won't even happen because I think for the past two weeks Daniel Bryan has not had a match on Raw. He's just been in segments or have ha, was going to have a match, but the match got thrown out because of interference before the match or something like that. But uh, if this match does happen, I don't know what they'll do. I was originally going to say Bryan would win this, but due to Bryan's health, I don't know if they would do this. 
it's very touchy. It's deja vu like last year. I think Daniel Bryan held the, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship all the way to Money in the Bank. I don't know if he'll hold this belt all the way to Money in the Bank. It's possible, but I, I would not doubt the WWE if they take a, the belt off him right now uh, and give it to Ben and Barrett to where they actually have a healthy champion. It's not the popular decision, but it's probably the best decision for, for the career of Bryan in the future and this, the Intercontinental Championship in general. Bryan, Bryan has done good to, uh, and I apologize, just the, the storms are fucking up this dog, and I apologize. Uh, but, uh, what was I saying? Uh, you know, just keep the overall health Dana Bryan and, and make sure he actually has a, a career left. And we have the Divas Championship. There's a big change. Naomi finally gets her chance. It is her time. She is trying to be Shad, which I hope they don't make her the next Shad, even though Cameron would be a perfect example of JTG. But what we have here is the, the, the Nikki Bella, the Nikki Bella, because she called herself that every once in a while, I guess, against Naomi. And Naomi has had a hell of an opportunity here. She's beat be both Bellas. She's beat Nikki Bella twice. She's beat uh, beaten Brie on Raw, um, and she's honestly the most athletic person on this roster, let alone the most athletic diva on the roster in general. But uh, personally, I would love to see Naomi win this belt. I don't know if they will because if you've seen Total Divas over the past few months before the season finale, the Bellas' contracts are eventually running over and running out, and they're not going to be signed. So with that being said, Naomi will win the belt and the Bella will leave. Both Bellas will leave and that's what I personally believe will happen. Uh, on to the WWE Undisputed Championship match, whatever championship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's not major stipulations here. I mean, still in a steel cage. Jericho is banned. But as we heard on Raw via Triple H the, uh, after his tough enough announcement, which I still feel wasn't officially made because Kane interrupted him and then Rollins and whatever. Kane will be the guardian of the gate, meaning the door of the cage will be operated by Kane and Kane alone. Meaning this match has also, like the Bryan match, I don't know what will happen here. Because originally I was thinking either they'll have Orton win the belt because he has this rematch for over a year and he hasn't used it until now, or Rollins will remain the champion. But this all depends on Kane and who he wants to open the door for. If, for instance, you know, if you, you win a cage match going through the door over the top or whatever, or a pinfall or submission, if it comes down to escaping the cage, it will go down to Kane and who he feels is best for business as the undisputed champion. And that will be interesting, to say the least. And finally, I think we've already gone through this, the, the U.S. title match is in a Russian chain match. Uh, I think the only reason we're doing this is because I wanted to update on the situation of the Russian chain match because I was a little confused on if it was pinball or submission or if it was touching all four corners. Uh, last couple weeks we have learned it is touching all four corners in succession to win the match, meaning if you if you get stopped during the... Uh, uh, if someone pulls you back out of the reach of the uh, chain or, or the turnbuckle chain length is taking you out of the way, it is a restart. It's that at basically just start over from a turnbuckle you choose. I don't know if that's the same turnbuckle or whatever, but there is one rule that could be interesting in this match. Uh, much like any chain match or strap match or anything like that, if you somehow release yourself from the structuring, whatever the chain, a strap, a bull rope, or whatever, if you release yourself from that mechanism, you will be instantly disqualified. Now, with that being said. Rusev technically will not be pinned, will not be submitted in this match, but he, if he loses, it will still be a loss. But, uh, the only way I can see Rusev winning this match is the use of the chain, because the chain is legal in this match. We And, uh, personally, uh, as much as I hate to say it, Cena will hel hold the belt for a long time. This way it will take him out of the way of the main event and the world title and everything else, and that will be great. However, the only way I can see this ending is possibly the DQ finish of Rusev 
releasing himself from the chain and attacking Cena with it, or Cena overcoming the odds like he always does somehow and wins the match normally. But Cena, this is working interesting because Cena has not had the best uh, win-loss record in chain matches and bull rope matches. Because I believe the last bull rope match or any thing with Cena having his arm tied to something was the Great American Bash against, I believe it was against JBL, unless I'm confusing it with Eddie Guerrero, which I could be. But I believe this is Cena's first ever strap match, bull rope match, chain match, whatever kind of match. Unless I'm confusing that with Eddie Guerrero and JBL, uh, which I probably am, which was a great match, and that's probably why I'm bringing it up. But that's the last match I remember having some kind of structure, with the exception of the Extreme Rules strap match with Sheamus and Mark Henry, which was horrible. But uh, I mean, this is Cena's first ever match in uh, some kind of structure to where you're bound by a chain, a strap, or a bull rope, or something. Uh, and that could be a big problem with John Cena. So if Rusev wins, it wouldn't be a surprise to me if it did happen. But unfortunately, he probably will win regardless. And, and Extreme Rules is uh, five days away, like I said before. If there's any other matches, we'll bring them up, but I think this is the last thing we're doing. And it's the one night a year where WWE goes extreme, but how far will they go?